First of all, <clears throat> I'm not a hockey guy. I'm a Canadian kid. I played a little bit of hockey when I was young, but uh, I'm, I'm from a vintage where um, I played a lot of sports growing up, and the one I gravitated towards was football. So that's what I looked like uh, into, my, into my 20s. Uh, and then I went on to coach high school football for a couple of years uh, before I started a family and started a few businesses. So I'm not here as a hockey guy per se, um, but I am a hockey guy because of these people. This is my son. Um, he started skating when he was three. He's still playing today. This is my youngest daughter. She switched from figure skating when she was about seven. She's 18 and she's still playing today. So I'm here for this reason. I think uh, it was mentioned earlier today that most of you are probably here for the same reason. You love the sport, you love coaching, you love kids. And I love my kids. And I love hockey. Okay? I've seen a lot of good things come uh, from hockey for my kids, for my family. We've had a great time. Uh, but there's some things I didn't love about it. And that's, that's really how this company got started. So if any of you are hockey parents, you'll know this conversation. I used to pick my kids up from practice every week or every, every day of every week. They jump in the back of the car. How is practice? Mm. What's the answer? Good. Okay. What did the coach say to you? What's the answer to that? Nothing. Okay. Like my son's 21. He's been playing for, what, 16 years? No coach has ever said a word to him. It's unbelievable. Okay. So I don't know how he learned the sport, but I don't know. So that was really the genesis of what we're doing. We're a feedback system. And this, this quote is a pretty good hockey quote. I can't be a hypocrite as a coach because as a player, that's what I wanted. I wanted feedback. Adam Oates said that. This was in the LA Times last week. Just seeing, he's talking, this is John Stevens, head coach of the Los Angeles Kings, talking about his two sons who've both signed NHL contracts. And he said, just seeing what it does to them when they get feedback and when they don't, that's been a real reminder to me of how important it is. Today, we all expect immediate feedback. We want to know what's going on. I've learned from that. I've had young players that maybe you don't talk to them every single day, but they need to know what they did well and what they didn't. They have less anxiety, they move on and get better right away as opposed to wondering where they stood. And then I heard this at a conference I attended this morning. Feedback matters. Acknowledge hard work, develop the individual, build up your people. Now, this is Glenn Gulletson, John Stevens. These are NHL coaches talking about how much pro athletes need feedback. And if you think they need it, Take it down to a seven-year-old. They need it more. But who really needs it is the parents. Okay, so this is what I got periodically. I tried to dig these out of the drawers that I stuffed them in as my kids were growing up. And uh, I like this because somebody tried. People are trying to do this. They're trying to tell us things about our kids from their perspective. The interesting thing about this is that on the left-hand side, one means bad, and on the right-hand side, one means good. So as I read those two things, I have to figure out which one's which. So coaches, like teachers, like parents, we all instinctively know that feedback is important to kids and to parents. So we set out to create a system that would uh, be easy to use, that would enable coaches to quickly and efficiently provide feedback from themselves, one person, to many, without actually talking to them. No, no need for... Um, face-to-face uh, -face meetings, maybe once a year if you have to. So the system collects personal data. Now, I won't read all this stuff to you. Quantitative data, which is stuff that can be measured. Qualitative data, which is things like coachability and hockey sense. You can input video to illustrate what you're talking about, and you can provide comments, which is prescriptive coaching uh, commentary. We use a standardized uh, data collection methodology. Triangulation of sources means we ask uh, like my son's probably had 60 coaches in his life. If I asked all 60 coaches at different times in his life who don't know each other the same question and gave them the same method to answer the question, what they thought of his work ethic, if I aggregate all those answers, that's his work ethic. The truth is in that distributed uh, in, in, uh, answer system. So we aggregate and normalize the data. We capture all kinds of data. And we normalize it through an algorithm. We provide comparison sets. So. I got a call at Christmas from a guy who said he's calling from Spain about hockey. I thought it was my buddy. It turns out it wasn't. His son plays for FC Barcelona, had a hockey team. He wanted to know if they ran the system, would they be able to compare their kids' data to the data from the same age, same uh, level kids in North America? And the answer would be yes with our system. 
So the other things, age and ability neutral. So it's all, all got to be meaningful and valuable for six-year-olds or 26-year-olds. High hockey value, we work with a lot of advisors. I'm trying to compress about seven years of R&D into six minutes here. Um, but we got a lot of help from a lot of people to, to create the system. And last and not least, we want it to be low cost. So you don't need any expensive gear to run this thing. We want everybody to be able to access this system. So basically, it's a SaaS, a software as a service. It's web-based. It operates on any device. And it consists of uh, these top-level categories, uh, skating, puck skills, fitness, intangibles, practice, and gameplay. There's a custom bucket. And there's about, nine, there's about 95 what we call dimensions within the system that you can use to provide feedback in a standardized way. So I'll just blast through these real quick. Drills for goaltenders. Sliders to provide uh, quanti or qualitative uh, feedback. You can input uh, video and comments. And all of this information goes directly to that kid's account. And because that kid is a minor, most likely, it goes to their parents. So you're coaching out loud. You're coaching in public. And what we found with that is the more the, the, more the parents know, the more they relax. They see where their child is. Like my parents were not harassing my teachers at school, uh, asking them why I wasn't the class valedictorian, because they'd seen my report cards. You know, it wasn't going to happen, right? So, so the system spits out all kinds of reports for coaches. Uh, there's comparison data. And then the kids see their own data only, and not the data of other kids. It's all, it's all anonymized at that point. So there's granular detail uh, that pops up. This is how the system's used on ice. This is a guy named Chris Collins. He's one of our early adopters. He's a former Boston College player, Hobie Baker runner-up. And his group has adopted this thing, and they're pounding the heck out of it right now for us. So this is an uh, example of how it's used. The drills can be run with stuff you got around the rink, just cones, a whistle, and an iPad. As soon as you click stop, that data goes directly into that player's account. So for coaches, we're trying to help build trust with players and parents, provide that one-to-one -one and one-to-many prescriptive feedback, eliminate those time-consuming and contentious meetings, you know, the ones we all hate. I hate it as a parent. And as a football coach, try having 50 of them. It's not possible. Um, help clarify team and individual strengths and challenges. For the players, obviously, they get to see their own personal strengths and their challenges in detail. Um, but they can also see their progress over time. <clears throat> they can build a, per a personal hockey transcript. This data stays with them and trends over, over their life. And, it, and they can make it visible to scouts and coaches uh, as they go forward and help them build strong competitive habits and growth mindsets. For the parents, we want them to see and understand what's going on between the coaches and their children and help them understand their child's capabilities. And for organizations, it really gives them a 50,000 foot well, in Canada, 15,240 meter view of their organization. We're trying to foster stronger connections to the parents so they can retain players in their programs and they can visualize the ROI that their coaches and programs bring to their parents. So we operate on two premises here. Feedback is fuel. When you get feedback, it might be good, it might be bad, but either way, a competitive athlete, a competitive person takes that and turns that into fuel to improve and that knowledge is power. Some of the best coaches that I ever played for, I got a lot of feedback from those guys. You know, they were telling me what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong, and how to get better. So that's really the key for us now as coaches, to provide the feedback for the players and especially the parents on how to develop these kids as not only hockey players, but great people. I really see power players as a way to give the feedback on a lot of different things, whether it's intangibles, academics off the ice, and metric testing that you can do to really gauge a kid's improvements. You can blow a whistle and tell kids to skate and scream and yell at them all you want, but as soon as you add that competitive fire and you get their juices going a little bit, they all want to be first and they all want to check their scores. They're just more pumped than ever to get on the ice and, and work hard. Using Power Player to track how well they're doing it against the other kids that compete level is what keeps kids interested. Power Player is really unique because it incorporates all the little individual pieces that we've tried to document improvement in kids' abilities. Also, character traits and the way they get along with other kids, you start to change the focus a little bit from the wins and losses and a little bit more into the kids themselves. Are they having fun? Are they good kids? Are they developing good personalities and ability to work together? 
at any level, every player needs development. Every player needs to be better at something. And regardless if you're 10 or you're 20 or you're 30 playing in the NHL, there's always room for improvement. And the people that understand that are the ones that you can really help. No one's trying to make an NHL player at seven, eight years old, but you can definitely put a kid in the right direction with some great leadership and some good habit forming stuff at a young age. There's tendencies that create results. We know what those things are. This is just, this is documenting them. This is like getting them into the hands of the people that need to know. These are the kind of things that a power player can do. That's it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. If you got any questions, come see me. Appreciate it.